When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. I'm here with Kotobuki Jake. Hi. And we're here to show you what they got. Yes. Uh, now that I've had They it got up, a lot to choose from this week. <laughs> but two things that uh, Department of Corrections, apparently Lupin the Third, Goimon's Blood Spray, and Komodo Friends... Uh, season one are being released. This coming one delays, delays, delays. I love how those two get paired together because they seem like such a good match. Uh, probably. <laughs> it's a kid show versus something that's probably not. <laughs> but uh, Goemon's blood spray is, doesn't sound like warm and friendly to you. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, let's <coughs> let's start with that beautiful footage mm -hmm. right now. She was living on couches that belonged to her friends. She would sleep with her feet in her shoes, hanging over the ends, looking over her shoulder, never knowing herself. I believe she could never fit in till somebody knew. Quite a bit this time. Yes. I'll let you uh, go ahead and start us off. I, I gotta start us off with the pickups anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll go ahead and start us off with a couple. Uh, well, one, and then we'll do another. A couple of classic films are getting the 4K mm -hmm. treatment this week, and uh, I'm not really sure what all they're getting beyond that. But if you don't have either film in your collection, this could possibly be a very interesting way to upgrade. The first, of course, is the Frank Capra classic, It's a Wonderful Life. And I'm sure many of you are groaning loudly at this point, but I like this film. It's overwatched and slightly overrated, but it is a true classic. And 
I could mm-hmm. actually see if they really, really, really put the effort in. I could see this looking good on 4K. Yeah. Now, but, Tenka, you got to oh, lower it down, so I'll show oh, it right here. There yeah. we go. There you go. Sorry. So so you uh, can compare editions. It's got a couple of special features right. on it, but uh, I can imagine them really digging in. Right. If yeah. they get it right. Uh, so my first one, I'm just starting with uh, the top of my pile here. Uh, which is Psycho Pass Season 2 is getting a Classics release, which is the pricier Mm -hmm. of Funimation's line of re-releasing. I have it already. Um, But not the Classics Edition. Yeah, and I don't think this is very different, really. I don't think we're going to get much thinner than it already is. It's probably just this edition with the classic slipcover on it. Probably. And it's probably not going to differ that much in price. The classics don't really. I think they might mm-hmm. knock a few bucks off. But uh, this is the one that got a lot of uh, flack for being the lesser of the... the Psychopath started out really, really good and strong. Mm-hmm. And apparently this was not as good. I've heard it's a good series, at least yeah. at first, like you said. And so I, I'm curious. I've heard it's really, really dark and bloody, though. I played the video game and it's kind of messed up. I mean, <laughs> essentially, it's people be basically happy and calm and don't express emotion, or else we kill you. Uh huh. You die. Yes. Yeah. So along those lines, we have the <laughs> the, the classic the classic uh, film edition of Frank L. Baum's books about the land of Oz. Just called The Wizard of Oz. We'll put it over here so you can see the picture. Now in 4K. And now in 4K. Again, we got a couple classics getting that treatment this week. Now, of course, he's got a pretty fancy... I think I have the same edition that has a lot of special features already. So if the new one doesn't measure up, then I don't know. But if it does, then 4K. It's one of those that was filmed in such a way that it could clean up more, I'm sure. So the 4K might be a a good thing. But then again, 4K sometimes is something to be said about too clear. Yes. When you deal with certain types of fantasy uh, films. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like they've released a special edition of this constantly. Yeah. So... How many special features are we going to be adding to this? I mean, really. <laughs> it's Wizard of Oz. You could always find something. Yeah, but you're yeah. right. It could go either way with the 4K treatment. But I'm curious. And again, if you don't have Wizard of Oz, well, that's weird. But if you don't, then this could be a fun opportunity to get it in a very interesting format. <laughs> so, back in... In the time I was growing up, I loved Batman the Animated Series. Mm -hmm. And then it had a Mm spinoff called Batman Beyond. Mm -hmm. I already have the DVD, but it's now on Blu-ray. So you can get it on Blu-ray. And a very similar uh, box, but it comes with a little like a little pop Batman Ah. on it. So you can uh, get that. And it's kind of Batman in the future. I didn't watch any episodes of this. I have still not seen a single episode. Hmm. Did you watch this one? I have not, no. I know you did watch the Batman animated series. Oh, yeah, that was a classic. It was 52 episodes, so it's, you know, it's a decent amount for an okay price. Okay. So, uh, a far more recent uh, release, uh, one of the big (coughs) films this summer, and actually, according to what I have heard and read so far, still considered a front runner in this year's Oscar race, which is kind of strange, all things considered, uh, is the new film from Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Wish I could have seen it. I wish I could have, too. I'll get to now that it's coming out. But, yeah. Um, I need to put a hold on at the library. I didn't know it was coming out so soon. But anyway, um, this, of course, features a very impressive cast uh, headlined by Leo DiCaprio, uh, Margot Robbie, uh, I want to say Brad Pitt, yeah. and a couple other folks. And, of course, it's a kind of in the same vein as Inglorious Bastards. He took historical events and put his own Tarantino spin on them. Uh, it involves uh, 
Charles Manson, Sharon Tate, and some other random <clears throat> folks in the Hollywood scene mixed into fictional yeah. stories. Uh, Tarantino, I expect kick-ass soundtrack. I expect a lot of shocking violence, a lot of profanity, and some very, very cool set pieces, and some foot shots, because Tarantino is a famous foot fetishist. Uh, and it could be... A very unusual film, but it could be a very good film. I really do want to see it. I and you can't see it in China. Didn't get to see it in theaters, unfortunately. <laughs> so, and again, if you missed it in theaters, yeah. it's coming to home video. So that's one good <laughs> thing about us being the home of the free, is we get to see this movie, and the Chinese cannot. Yeah, mm. you heard about that, right? They banned it. Yeah, I think I did hear because that. of the Bruce Lee scene. Which oh right, heard, they do make the reference one that was, to Bruce Lee, and it was supposedly very unflattering and uh, uh, not necessarily re uh, based in facts. So, which you know comes with the territory. Yeah, exactly. But I can't wait to see his take on Star Trek. <laughs> if he does indeed go with that, yes, it'll be interesting. So another classic getting the 4K treatment is Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Jim Belushi. Hmm. And uh, I loved this one. Of course, it's a lot harder if you did not grow up around the time I did or understand mm -hmm. what the Cold War was about. Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of grew up on the tail end of the Cold War. But this was, I mean, you could have seen this, I'm sure. I don't know if you saw this one or not. I don't think I ever did. But I'm sure you would have seen this. You could see the Soviet Russia stuff, and you would understand what it was about. Oh, yeah. Many of the current generation probably have no clue what this is about. <laughs> but, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a Russian uh, operative coming over to help apprehend a, a criminal that got over to the United States, and uh, Belushi is the American detective signed with him. It's a fun film. Mm -hmm. Cool 80s action trash right <laughs> so speaking of cool action trash that seems like a really good segue into the new release of senran kagura shinobi master now why uh, are you getting this <laughs> <laughs> well i have the first season <laughs> uh senran kagura there is no two ways about it it's trashy good fun i mean it's it's not quality uh I really have only seen a very little bit of it, but I am interested in one day getting all the seasons if I get a really good price on them. Oh, and there's a ton of um, games. Yeah, I know. And I've seen the playthroughs on some of it, and it looks fun. Yeah, they get but... to tear their clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Likely said, not quality <laughs> so much as... Uh, uh, almost a guilty pleasure kind of thing. But uh, I just thought I would mention that it's coming out. And that is all I have to say on that. <laughs> so, this is the Halloween season. What can we do without a little bit of horror? And we've got Ayakashi uh, Japanese Horror Stories. Mm -hmm. Which uh, you can see these three I've got. And it's in a nice Blu-ray package. Mm -hmm. So you get them all packaged in a nice little bow. Mm -hmm. uh, this one here, matter of fact, inspired the series Mononoke. That looks like a very disturbing cat. They're not Princess Mononoke, but the ser but a series right, called Mononoke, right. which um, they're very different. Each one is a very they're different mm -hmm. Japanese horror tale, right? And it's a decent series. I really do like the opening theme. That's pretty cool. Cool. I need to check that out. It's on the to do list. Um, and uh, my other anime offering this week. God damn Anaplex. Yeah. <laughs> I think they are the ones releasing. It's definitely getting a pricey release. Yeah. Uh, but a movie I did see in theaters that I thought ra rather highly of. It certainly had an awesome title. Mm -hmm. Is a movie called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Which, uh, you know, if you watch this channel, and you do because you're awesome, uh, <laughs> you've seen my commentary on this earlier in the year when I went to see it. It's, um, but in case you missed it, um, 
the basic gist of it is you have this dude who's extremely taciturn, does not make connections easily with other people, and this girl who's his classmate who finds out that she is got an issue with her pancreas and uh, won't be around much longer and makes it her mission to make him sociable. And it's a beautiful film, oh. very beautifully animated. It's got some great music. It's pretty well done. It's a little bit, well, it's a tearjerker, and it is a little sappy at times. But if you are interested in your tearjerker animes, it mm. is a good one. And uh, I kind of want to read the novels based on one of these days. But mm. One thing I hate about Aniplex mm. is that they have they release mostly quality titles. <laughs> yes. It, most of their releases are things I would want to watch. But this <sighs> one I will get, even if I have to pay the higher price. The $70. Which... <laughs> <laughs> I did pay that much for your name, but your name was categorically a better yeah. film. But... <laughs> Oh, you got yeah. the... And I got a cool oh, yeah. set. That yeah. was true. That was a good was, set. Yeah. But... Speaking okay. of Anaplex, I have... There is a release of this, Fate, Fate Zero. I want that. The prequel to Fate Stay Night, or really the prequel to Unlimited, Fate Unlimited Blade Works, if you really want to uh, mince the words. <laughs> uh, and it is a cool series. This is the cheapo version. <laughs> Even with this, on sale... I still paid about a hundred bucks for this. Mm. Now, a hundred and forty bucks gets you the whole series on one Blu-ray set, which means there is the chance I might be able to get it on Blu-ray for what you paid. Maybe, which would be nice. I would not. I would not mind that. The problem with Anaplex is that even their sales don't see them going down too far. Which... Yeah. Well, when I was patient enough, I finally got Dura for eighty-eight. So you know, yeah. maybe, maybe. <laughs> And yet it's still super expensive regardless. Yes. It's sad that a deal, like, I'm sitting there thinking, my kill that kills. I can up for 25 a volume. Yeah. <laughs> or those Puella sets you got that were 50 bucks a volume, but you saved again, a bundle. 50 bucks a volume <laughs> for those limited editions is sadly a high rate. Yeah, weren't they retailing like 130 or something each? The originals were 75 a piece. Oh, really? I thought it was more than that. Yeah, they weren't okay. too terrible, but there weren't that many episodes per. I mean, you're no. dividing like a 12 episode series into yeah. three parts. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. We digress. <laughs> Um, I will not digress much here. Kundun makes my list for the simple fact that it is an Oscar-nominated Martin Scorsese film. Enough said. Scorsese's awesome. I've been wanting to see this for years and just haven't gotten around to it yet. I don't know if this is his first Blu-ray release, but it is getting a Blu-ray release. And... I, just like me, I, now you will have the chance to see it on Blu-ray. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, one of the ones I own, but I couldn't find the multi-pack it was on, is the 80s Blob movie. Ah. Actually, to me, this is a movie that freaked me out as a child. I do have it now. It's very well done. I think that they did a good job of converting something silly like the blob into something quite disturbing and scary. Now Shout Factory is releasing a really nice gussied up version. I may upgrade mm -hmm. if I can get it on sale. I'm not going to pay the full like 20 to 25 for it. It just isn't worth that, but at least to me. Uh, but uh, still, it might be worth an upgrade. Hmm. Definitely. All right. So, speaking of upgrades, I really I wasn't sure what order I was going to do it in, but you gave me a segue here. We have this week not only a twofer from <laughs> Criterion, but we have a twofer happening right before their yearly November sale. Yeah. And it's awesome. Both of these are, I'm oh, stoked yeah. about both of these. The first one is going to be my upgrade because I already have this on DVD. It actually was a rare DVD that I had to search mm. for. So I may keep it just because it's a rare DVD. 
but it's a film that I really am excited to see on Criterion. It's a John Sayles film from, I believe, the same year that The Blob that you were just it's talking about, 1988. Film. <laughs> it is, but it's a um, John Sayles film from 1988, I believe 88, maybe, uh, <clears throat> that stars Chris Cooper and mm-hmm. features, among others, James Earl Jones, yeah. uh, called Maytuan. And Maytuan takes its name from a little town in West Virginia. And it's based on, basically, it's about the union, the formation yeah. of unions in the coal mining uh, area. And like you said, it's not exactly a feel-good film. It's not exactly happy-go-lucky. Yeah. But it's really good. It was the first major role Cooper had that I know. I think it was his first major role. And really, it was almost a decade before he really came on the map as someone people yeah. knew. Uh, he did another John Sayles film, uh, Lone Star. And then he, of course, starred in Silver City for Sayles. Um, Sayles often does politically charged films. And this and Silver City are probably his two biggest ones that I've seen that I I really love the both of them. Uh, again, Maytuan's a rare film. Most people have forgotten it even exists. So I'm thrilled to see it coming back into print. Yeah. I will love to upgrade to a Blu-ray with lots of bonus features. But like I said, I may end up holding on to my edition anyway and it won't save a lot of space, but... Yeah. Yeah, your other one is probably the reason why I'll have to hold back on May Tuan. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I probably only have money for one. Right. Uh, speaking of, something I'll have to eventually get because I have the first season. Uh-huh. The Netflix Castlevania series uh-huh. has its season two, which a lot of people felt was not quite as good as season one, but uh, still, be quite, uh, <laughs> still quite good as a series. Not quite as bad as how season two was with Psycho Pass. Um, but uh, still, uh, it looks like something that I would. Well, actually, I know I'm gonna have to pick it up because the Netflix series is pretty darned awesome. And it's a rarity that Netflix puts stuff out on physical media, yes. so you want to encourage it so they oh, yeah. can do it more. I agree um, with that. But I, I've seen most of. I think I saw all of season one. I can't. It's remember, not very but, long. Yeah, it's like what, four episodes, something like that. Yeah, it's not long. It's not expensive yeah. to get either. If you I want enjoyed, to get it. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed what I saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I grew up with that old Castlevania mm-hmm. game. That's kind of the the show's not much like the game, but it's still. <laughs> so my last one. I have a guest. Da 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 da. <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> Criterion already released Godzilla a while ago and it's yep. been on my to-do list but this week they are really outdoing themselves and we'll have a look at the picture there Godzilla the Showa era films 1954 to 1975 mm-hmm. this is uh got a little picture here of the uh, oh, man. You can kind of see it. Yeah. But anyway, um, the listing here. Films in this set. Godzilla. Godzilla Raids Again. King Kong vs. Godzilla. <laughs> Mothra vs. Godzilla. Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Invasion of Astro Monster. Ibira Horror of the Deep. Son of Godzilla. Destroy All Monsters. All Monsters Attack. Godzilla vs. Hedora, Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Terror of Mechagodzilla, not to mention a boatload of special features, um, including, I believe, some... Oh, we have some of the English dub tracks for some of the others. Oh, awesome. They're We've cheesy got, good fun. Yeah, they are. Uh, tons of interviews and stuff. It's going to be awesome. We and really it, need to do the original movie right. on the uh, movies galore. I know we've talked about we're, it. We've and tried, I feel like, but yeah, it's just failing. One of these days. But this set, I know, I, and it's coming out just in time for the sale. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my last is uh, Yumiro Patisri. Uh, I, or, sorry, I pronounce it... Uh, with the French, <laughs> like, see it. Uh, but uh, see it? it is a series. It's 
made in Japan. It's like 30 bucks. It's for 50 episodes. 50? Yeah. Wow. And it is and I I really like the work that the these particular people do. And you can see, tell by the art style if you do not know where those the work comes in. It is just uh I, I really want it. I will probably get it sooner than later. Um, I didn't realize that there were that many. And oh, made in Japan doesn't usually do super long series. That's kind of interesting. At least I think it's fifty some episodes. That's what I read. Um, yeah, fifty yeah. episodes. There you go. <laughs> right, and I'm trying to figure out. Oh, that that's no wait. I'm trying to figure out what what the uh, who it is that you were wondering about that. Do you know who who it is that had you excited about that one? I can't remember. I just know that it was something particular. But uh, uh, with that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up uh, as we're right. moving right along, and uh, we gotta get another like half hour left before we have to get right. to our Halloween episode. Ooh, I look forward to that one. Yeah. So, with that being said, best wishes to y'all. And we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.